Hey there, physics. Um, so our next unit here is about light, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about some of the basics of light, and uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about the wave speed equation from the last unit, but now we're going to apply it to light. So we're going to talk about some of the different kinds of light, um, some of the different properties of light, and we're going to learn to apply the wave speed equation to problems involving light, and that's our target here, to apply the wave speed equation to problems involving light. Let's talk a little bit about light. Light's kind of a weird thing. It's not really like other things. We've talked about how things move, how like particles move, right? I mean, we spent most of the school year talking about how particles move. You know, they have a mass, they have a velocity, they, they move according to the kinematic equations, according to the laws of motion, they have a, a, a energy and they have uh, momentum and all of these things right and we've talked about waves we've talked about how waves move wave has waves have a wavelength and they have a frequency and you know we can find their speed using their wavelength and their frequency but light's weird because light is kind of like both sometimes you can think about light like it's a particle light like it moves like you know a basketball and sometimes you can think about light like it moves like a wave. And so we can talk about the frequency and the wavelength of light, right? Um, and this property of light, where it has, has properties of both particles and waves, is called duality. We say it's particle-wave duality, right? Um, and so, you know, since it's kind of like a wave, we can talk about its frequency and its wavelength. And there are, um, there's a whole spectrum of frequencies that light takes on. And let's go and let's talk about some of the different frequencies of light. Light is kind of broken up into different categories based on frequency. So let's take a look at some of that. Okay, so there is far more light than you can see with your eyes. Okay, um, in fact, the light that you can see your eyes with your eyes makes up only a very small portion of the entire what they call electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. The entire electromagnetic, the entire spectrum of all the different frequencies and wavelengths that light can take, the, the visible light, the light that you can see with your eyes, actually only takes up a very small part of it. Okay. Let's talk about some of the different, um, some of the different uh, types of light that we find on that electromagnetic spectrum. Um, in the highest frequencies, the highest frequencies of light are called gamma rays. Gamma rays have very high frequencies. They have frequencies above 10 to the 19 hertz. I mean, think about the number 10 to the 19. It's a huge, huge number, right? So the, the, their wavelengths or their, um, their frequencies, very, very high frequencies, right? Um, and that means that a gamma ray is also going to have a very, very short wavelength. So the length of that wave very, very small. A gamma, a gamma ray's um, wavelength might be about the size of an atom's nucleus. I mean, that's, that's extremely, extremely tall, right? Gamma rays are the most energetic form of light. Gamma rays are emitted by nuclear explosions. They happen in supernovas in outer space. Um, and because their wavelength is so small, they can't penetrate through Earth's atmosphere. Um, quickly, as they try to move through Earth's atmosphere, they end up striking an atom and then they're absorbed by the atom. So, you know, gamma rays can't really travel through the atmosphere. And that's a good thing because gamma rays are quite dangerous. Um, if you read the comics, I mean, I don't read the comics, but I know uh, the story of the Incredible Hulk. Um, the guy got irradiated with gamma rays and he turned into the Incredible Hulk. He turned green and strong and angry and all that stuff, right? But in reality, getting irradiated with gamma rays isn't going to give you superpowers. It's going to give you cancer and death. So yeah, they're kind of dangerous. Um, astronomers will use gamma rays to study objects in outer space. They'll use each of these different kinds of light that we're talking about here to study objects in outer space because each of the different kinds of light can give them different clues about what uh, objects in space are made out of, right? Or what they look like or what their different properties are. Um, but the thing about gamma rays, when they want to study objects in space with gamma rays, they have to put their telescope, their gamma ray telescope, in outer space, 
right? Because gamma rays can't penetrate through the atmosphere. So they have to put their gamma ray telescopes in outer space. There used to be a, a very famous, I'm not sure if it's still up there, but a very famous uh, space telescope that NASA put up. It was the Chandra, or was that the X-ray one? They had, a, they had a gamma ray telescope and they had an X-ray telescope. So yeah, one of them was called Chandra. I don't remember which one. Um, oh, Com the Compton Gamma Ray Telescope. It was the Compton Gamma Ray, and it was the Chandra X-ray Telescope. We'll get to X-rays in a minute. Um, so gamma rays, kind of dangerous, uh, very high frequencies, very small wavelengths, pretty cool stuff. Okay, down the scale a little bit from gamma rays, you find X-rays. X-rays have um, frequencies that are between about 10 to the 16 and 10 to the 19 hertz. So think about those numbers, 10 to the 16 is still an extremely high number, right? So x-rays have very, very high frequencies. And that means, again, that their wavelengths are very small, okay? The wavelength of an x-ray might be about the size of an atom. So a gamma ray has, has a wavelength about the size of an atomic nucleus. Uh, x-ray has a wavelength about the size of an atom. And x-rays are also very energetic, and they, sh they share many properties with gamma rays. Um, X-rays are produced when a high-energy electrons strike an atom, right? And like gamma rays, they can't penetrate through the atmosphere, um, which is good because X-rays are also dangerous, right? They can harm you. Um, they can damage your, your DNA. They can get in there and rip your DNA apart, right? Um, X-rays are used for a number of things. Everybody's probably familiar with medical X-rays, right? You can see here the very first x-ray that was ever taken by Wilhelm Röntgen. This is an x-ray of, I believe it was his wife's hand. Um, and you might ask, how is it that x-rays can penetrate through your body, but they can't penetrate through the atmosphere, right? I mean, if you think about it, penetrating through the atmosphere, if x-rays are trying to come down from outer space, penetrating through the atmosphere, it's miles and miles and miles of air that they have to go through. But if they're trying to go through your hand, is only, uh, I don't know, it's probably less than a centimeter of hand that it has to go through, right? So, I mean, there's a big difference in, in the distance that they end up having to travel. Um, in addition to medical x-rays, scientists also use x-rays to study objects in space. And just like gamma rays, x-ray telescopes have to be placed in space. So with the gamma rays, there was the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory. With x-rays, it was called the Chandra X-ray Telescope. Um, and there's some about x-rays for you. Going down the electromagnetic spectrum from x-rays, you find ultraviolet light, right? Often called UV, ultraviolet. Ultraviolet light has frequencies between 10 to the 15 and 10 to the 16 hertz. Um, and the wavelengths of ultraviolet light are about the size of a molecule, right? So gamma rays had wavelengths the size of an atomic nucleus. Uh, X-rays had wavelengths the size of an atom. Uh, ultraviolet light has wavelengths the size of a molecule, so getting bigger wavelengths here, and smaller frequencies. Um, unlike higher frequencies, UV light does penetrate through the atmosphere. So you often hear like um, when you're going out to the beach or something, you want to wear your um, sunscreen that will protect you from ultraviolet light. Right, And while it's not as dangerous as gamma rays and x-rays, ultraviolet light can still, you know, with long-term exposure, cause cancer. Right, So you uh, go to the beach, you're going to be exposed to the, the ultraviolet light, you want to wear your sunscreen. Uh, UV is used for lots of different applications. It's used to sterilize materials, it's used in tanning beds, it's used in black lights. Um, scientists use it to study objects in outer space, just like uh, every other kind of light. And uh, one thing that I think is really cool about ultraviolet light is that um, scorpions glow under ultraviolet light. I, that's pretty cool. I'm going to get a scorpion so that I can just like do this as a demonstration in class. I think that would be awesome. Anyway. The next kind of light going down the electromagnetic spectrum there is visible light. Visible light is the light that you can see. All of the other kinds of light are invisible. You can't see them. But visible light, you can see it, right? Um, 
visible light, your eyes perceive the, vis the frequency of visible light by, by color, right? So the highest frequencies of visible light will look to you purple, like violet, right? And then lower frequencies will look uh, blue and then green and then yellow, orange, and finally the lowest frequencies will look red to you. Um, so, so that order was violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. And oftentimes, probably you learned at some point in the past, you can remember that order because it forms the acronym Roy G. Biv, right? Um, visible light is a very small portion of the, the entire spectrum. It's right around 10 to the 14 hertz. And uh, that's just a very small window of the spectrum that you can see. Um, down the scale from red is infrared right uh, infrared is the first, is the the next kind of invisible light there infrared has frequencies between 10 to the 12 and 10 to the 14 hertz and uh, the wavelengths of infrared light are about the size of a cell so you know ultraviolet was about the size of a molecule now we're getting bigger infrared is about the size of a cell and infrared light carries heat it's used for night vision right it's used in some space heaters it's used in ovens Scientists also look at objects in space using infrared light. They use every kind of light to look at objects in outer space. What I think is really cool about infrared light is that some things that are transparent in visible light are not transparent in infrared. And some things that are transparent in infrared are not transparent in visible light. So like here's a pretty cool picture where, I mean, look at the man's glasses, right? The man's glasses in visible light, you can see right through them. But in infrared, you can't. You can't see through them in infrared. Uh, look at the thing that he's holding. The thing that he's holding, you, you can't see through it in visible light, but you can see through it in infrared. So some things that are transparent and visible are not transparent in infrared and vice versa. So I, I think that's pretty cool. Infrared is also used um, in like your remote controls for like your TV. When you point your remote control at your TV, it sends a, a beam of infrared light. And uh, it's often used in automatic garage doors. So, you know, um, when you press your, your garage door opener to close the door, it will know if something's in its way because there's a, an infrared laser that's, that goes near the floor, and if that laser is broken, it won't close the door, right? So they use infrared light for those kinds of applications. Infrared light was the first kind of invisible light that was discovered, and I don't know, I think the story is kind of cool about how it was discovered. It was discovered by an English scientist named William Herschel, who also happened to be the discoverer of the planet Uranus, right? He was the first person in the history of the world to discover a planet. Um, and what he was doing is he was trying to figure out which color of light carried heat. So what he did is he took a prism and he took light from the window and split it into the different colors and he put a thermometer in each one of the colors and see which one is going to change. But he also, being a good scientist, took a, an additional thermometer, a control thermometer, and he put it on the end of the line right after the red thermometer. And um, he left the room, left it for a while, came back, looked at his thermometers, and which one do you think went up the most? It was the control thermometer. It was the one that was not supposed to go up at all. And so he figured there's another color here, another color of light that's invisible to our eyes, and that's the one that carries the most heat. And that's essentially what infrared light is, right? So pretty cool story there. Beyond infrared there, you'll find the microwaves, right? Microwaves have low frequencies, but they have wavelengths that are up to about that long, right? Up, about an inch. Um, microwaves are mainly used for radar and communication. Your cell phone probably uses microwaves to communicate with the cell tower. Um, surprisingly, believe it or not, microwaves are not utilized in microwave ovens. Radio waves are. So, yeah. Um, beyond microwaves there are radio waves. Radio waves have the lowest frequencies, but they have the longest wavelengths. Radio waves have wavelengths longer than about an inch, right? Um, because they're, they're low frequencies, radio waves are able to move through most things. 
which is why you can get you know a radio station inside of a building even though you can't see through the walls radio waves can move through the walls right um, radio waves can be blocked by metal cages they're called they call them faraday cages in fact it's pretty cool your um the front door of your microwave is a faraday cage if you uh ever look really closely at the front door of your microwave it's not it's not just clear glass right if you look close at it it's it's got it's got black dots black dots on it and you say why are those black dots on there well the black dots are on you can see through it right because the dots are you know maybe about that far apart visible light has a wavelength smaller than that right so the visible light can go through those black it can go around between those black dots and you can see through the window but radio waves have longer wavelengths so they get stopped at one of the dots so radio waves cannot make it through past those black dots even though visible light can so you can see through but the radio waves that are cooking stuff inside can't get out and cook your head while you're looking in the window right so pretty cool design there right radio waves one of the really neat properties of light is that it always always travels at the same speed even when you wouldn't think it would be traveling at the same speed it's traveling at the same speed light always moves the same speed and we're not going to get right now really into relativity and talk about um, looking at light from different perspectives but just, just take it as this for now that light always moves at the same speed and that speed is about 300 million meters per second three times ten to the eight meters per second which is equal to about 186,000 miles per second think about that for a minute 186,000 miles per second that's pretty fast right in fact light is the fastest thing in the world it's the fastest thing in the universe nothing can move the speed of light except light and nothing can move faster than the speed of light. So um, we usually use the variable c, it's not really a variable, it's a constant, to stand for the speed of light. c is the speed of light, and we know what this number is. It's about 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That'll be an important number for us to know. Okay, because light is like a wave, we can apply the wave speed equation to it. If you remember, the wave speed equation said that the, the speed of the light, or the speed of the wave, V is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, F lambda. Um, with light, we know what the speed is because light always moves the same speed. So we can kind of rewrite the wave speed equation, especially for light, because the speed of light is C, right? We said, we said C represents the speed of light. So instead of V, let's put C. So C equals F lambda, which is pretty cool because you know the speed of light so then if you know either the frequency or the wavelength, you can find the other one, right? So the two are directly correlated. If you know one, you know the other one. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to, we're going to utilize the wave speed equation having to do with light. Let's take a look at an example. Okay, here's a problem we can take a look at. It says the AM radio band extends from 5.4 times 10 to the 5th hertz to 1.7 times 10 to the 6th hertz. What are the longest and shortest wavelengths in this frequency range? Okay, so give me two different um, frequencies, and it's asking me to find the wavelength for each one of them. So one of the frequencies it said was one point or five point four times ten to the fifth hertz, and the other one it said was. Here, I'll get it over here. 1.7 times 10 to the 6 hertz. And it wants me to find the uh, wavelengths for those. Okay, so I'm going to put each one into here and we're going to work out what's the wavelength. So we know C, like we mentioned a minute ago, is 3. We can take it to be 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. The frequency, we'll use this first one here, 5.4 times 10 to the fifth times lambda. And then we'll divide both sides to find lambda, the wavelength. Let me grab my calculator. 
and we'll do 3 times 10 to the 8th divided by 5.4 times 10 to the 5th. And we get, uh, let's see here, 500 and how many significant figures? Let's do two significant figures. I get 560. 560. And that is a wave length, so it should be in meters. Okay, now let's do the other one here. So we know C, the speed of light, about 3.0 times 10 to the eighth. The frequency is 1.7 times 10 to the 6 times lambda. And then we'll divide to find lambda. So let's say 3.0 times 10 to the 8th divided by 1.7 times 10 to the 6th. And there the wavelength is two significant figures, about 180. And again, in meters. So the, the range of wavelengths there goes from 180 meters to 560 meters. Okay, so we talked a little bit about some of the properties of light. We talked about gamma rays, x-rays, uh, ultraviolet, visible, infrared, microwaves, radio waves, all that great stuff. We talked about the speed of light and we talked about applying the wave speed equation to light. So hopefully that helps us to be able to achieve our target, which is to be able to apply the wave speed formula to problems involving light. So until next time, take it easy.